Hey everyone, how you doing? So, I'm out here on my porch making this video because it's loud and dark inside. <laughs> I'm like, well, I could have all the kitchen lights on, but we haven't, um, they're fluorescent at the moment, and I hate fluorescent lights, and I'm like, I'm just going to sit on the porch. It is cold, kind of windy out here, but I don't know, cold air is good for you sometimes, and I don't think the wind will be too big of a problem for the, oh, <laughs> the label thing got you. Um, the too bad for the audio because I'm on the porch, so as long as the wind isn't going directly across the microphone, it'll be all right. So anyhow, <clears throat> all that stuff aside, I'm out here to show you how to make um, a CBD tincture out of hemp buds or, you know, cannabis, whichever one you want to use, the same process works. Um, and basically, um, yeah, we're just going to make a tincture today. It's a little bit different than my other tincture videos because there are some other steps. But, so this is, this is hemp. A bunch of people are going to be like, that's not hemp, but it is. Um, it really is. I was pretty shocked when I got it. It's really high quality. It's this year's. The first step you're going to do, before you even get to doing what I'm talking about, is you are going to do um, something called decarbing, where you take your hemp buds or your cannabis, and you put it on a baking sheet, and you pop it in your oven at 250, 250 Fahrenheit um, for 45 minutes. And it's going to get all dry and crunchy, and it would be horrible to smoke. But basically, um, the reason you want to do that is because if you're after the CBD, it's actually CBDA when it's on the plant before you smoke it. And then when you were smoking it, the heat turns it into CBD. It makes it so your body can actually process it. And so um, putting it in the oven is kind of like smoking it to where it makes it go from CBDA to CBD. Same thing with THC. If you're trying to make a, a cannabis tincture, it's THCA and the heat needs to convert it to THC. So again, all you're gonna do is pop your buds in um, onto a cookie sheet and then put it in the oven at 250 Fahrenheit for 45 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm like, I felt like I, <laughs> oh my goodness, my dad is here. He's going to have to wait. <laughs> he is just going to have to wait. Um, I looked over there and there's a big old smile on the face. <laughs> close the blinds, close the blinds. Um, close the blind. Hold on. I won't be able to concentrate if they don't know. Okay, I'll be alright. I'm just going to flow with it and pretend like I don't see people out of my peripheral view making funny fucking faces at me. <laughs> um, so, um, real human video. Um, so basically, after you've decarved your, um, your hemp or your cannabis, all you're going to do is get yourself a jar, whichever one that you can fill up for the most part. I know that this fits because I pre-filled the jar before the video, you know. Um, and I've got these gloves here. Because even with this being um, hemp, she's still really resinous. And <laughs> as some of you might know, if you get those crystals in your eyes, whether it's from hemp or cannabis, it sucks. You'll mace yourself. And I'm going to just break her up. I guess you could use a food processor, but look how dry she is pretty much after, um, after you decarb her if she's dry. So it's not too bad. And I'm not going to try to powder it. I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of a smash. Um... There are a lot of ways to do this online. Uh, most of them, actually, honestly, there's not that many ways to do it online. It's the same old, same old over and over again. They tell you to take high proof grain alcohol, pour it over your decarbed um, hemp or weed, and then they tell you to like sit it in a slow cooker on warm water for like 48 hours, strain it and call it a tincture. <sighs> If you guys have been watching my video for a while, <laughs> you know how kind of agitated I get by the instant gratification medicine making like that. Yeah, they're going to grab some of the THC and some of the CBD, but there's more to this plant, whether it's hemp or cannabis, than just the things that can get us high or calm us down. She's got lots of um, flavonoids and terpenes and things that are water soluble, things that are only oil soluble, like... Um, like CBD and THC are, are not water soluble. They are alcohol soluble, so I understand why they're using the high proof, but it doesn't mean that the other things that aren't alcohol soluble don't have um, any worth to them. So, I don't do it that way. I also don't just solely use alcohol because um, while CBD is um, alcohol soluble, she also responds well to like fatty stuff, like oils, and so part of this is gonna be glycerin which is um, just 
actually it's not really an oil. She isn't, is it? She dances between. She's um, a fatty alcohol, which always makes me kind of laugh when people are like, oh, I don't consume alcohol, so I make glycerin tinctures. Glycerin's alcohol. <laughs> it's just your body, your mind thinks it's different, but your body treats it pretty much the same way as if you were using alcohol. So um, it doesn't, it's not as strong though. It's not as strong as if you were using, um, you know, 100 proof vodka like we're going to today. And so I like to do um, a mix of both. So basically, I'm just giving this a little bit of a smash as I put it in there. There's two different kinds in here. I like to mix it up. Um, some have higher levels of CBD. Um, I get my hemp at the moment. I try all different types of places, but recently this batch came from um, Horn Creek Hemp Co. Here out of Oregon. I think I said that right. Um, and I was really, really, really surprised with their quality. Like you couldn't tell. I mean, and that stuff had been decarbed, so it was all you know dried out and, and crunchy. But before I did that, it was like. <laughs> You would not be able to convince a cop that it wasn't weed. You know what I mean? If you got pulled over, <laughs> you'd have to go through the test because it smelled like it looked like it. They did a beautiful job. Um, okay, so now I've put my decarbed hemp into my jar. You know, and it was filled up all the way when I before I crushed it. And it really, you're only going to crush it a little bit so you just have more surface space. So now, I'm going to take 100 proof vodka, which is 50% alcohol, 50% water. So if I put two cups of alcohol in there, or vodka in there, it's actually only one cup of alcohol. That's the way that 50-50 math, math works. But that way, we're getting not only her alcohol-soluble properties, like her, um, in this case, it's a CBD, um, but we're also going to get her water-soluble properties. Um, and now, I'm going to take glycerin, good grade glycerin, and I'm going to fill it up to the top. And glycerin's thick like an oil. And it's that, even though it is an alcohol, it's that fatty aspect that's going to act like an oil. The fats that are going to help with the oil-soluble properties um, of this hemp or if you use cannabis. And so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to let it, you can see the bubbles coming up out of it because it's thicker and it's a little cold out here. I'm going to let her kind of settle a little bit while I jab her. Um, so what you're going to do next after you put the cap on is you're going to sit it somewhere um, dark and hot for like six to eight weeks. Um, the warmer the better because um, CBD does respond to heat. It will help the alcohol and the fatty oil alcohol from the glycerin to um, extract that CBD. Um, and plus you're kind of like, if you think about it, you're kind of continuing to decarb it. Um, and, and so it really just helps to get all of that into your tincture. Um, and that's really all there is to it. It does take a longer time. Um, some more warm could be, I like to use um, seed heating mats inside of like a, a patio box, but you could use a smaller box. Don't put anything paper in there. Make sure that you have a control to turn the heat off so that way if it gets too hot, those seed um, mat turns off. But also, um, like on top of your refrigerator stays pretty warm, on top of your water heater, not on your wood stove, but near your wood stove, anywhere where it's going to be consistently in the 70 degree range or higher. Um, I mean, you don't want it like in like a 300 degree oven or something like that, but you could also pop it in um, a crock pot if you wanted to, but I mean, that's going to, I don't know if it would touch your electric bill any more than the seed heating mat would. I don't know. Um, so basically, that's it. So I see that she's got a little bit there. Um, of course, I'm using dried plant matter here, and you guys have never seen me do that with a tincture. And um, if I'm being honest, if I had the option, if I had the ability to have fresh hemp, like if you're a hemp grower or you're working with cannabis, um, do it right after you harvest. You can still decarb it in the oven. It'll be kind of like cooking. I might turn it down 10 degrees just so you don't um, overly cook it. Um, and then I would use that to make a tincture. Um, but right now, this is what I have to go after. So, you know, in my mind, I feel like one made out of fresh plant matter would be a lot better balanced. Um, my dad's looking out the window at elk. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and so now you're just going to cap it. You're going to sit it in your warm, dark place. Now, CBD is good for inflammation, a lot of pain. She's calming. Like, so I wouldn't say that she's going to, like, 
knock you out of an anxiety attack instantly, but if you're using her on a regular basis, she can just kind of promote that calm breathing and calming down and stopping your mind from being in that cycle. Um, one thing that I think folks don't understand about CBD is that um, she's not necessarily an instant reaction um, for everybody, meaning... Um, it needs to build up in your system. Sometimes it's people like, oh, I took CBD, I took it, you know, two or three days, didn't do anything for me, and then they just quit. But I'm like, if you take it, <laughs> oh, I don't know how they realize it's not a distraction for me, just out the window like that. Um, if you take it um, for like consecutively, like start taking it for weeks at a time, give yourself three months of daily taking CBD and see how that makes you feel. And you're like, I still don't feel it. Stop taking it and see what happens. See how shitty you feel in a week, you know. Um, but then, um, but we do have natural receptors in our brain for CBD, and sometimes these can kind of be blocked, and so it takes a little while of taking the CBD to to um, feel its effects. Um, it could be either or, or a combination of. But yeah, that really wasn't that hard, right? So to re recap, you're putting your your hemp or your cannabis buds in the oven at 250 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 minutes and that is to decarb it to make sure that you're, you're getting it to turn into the CBD that you're wanting, that your body can utilize. Um, and then you're going to put it in a jar that you can fill up pretty much most of the way. You're going to fill it halfway up with 100 proof vodka, halfway up with vegetable glycerin, the food grade kind. And then you're going to sit it in a dark warm place for six to eight weeks. And then after that, you're going to strain it and just use it as is, you know, maybe 10 to 15 drops to start off with. The truth is you won't know how much CBD you have per milliliter unless you send it off to a lab. Um, because then they can say, okay, well, we analyzed how much is in this little dropper. This is how much CBD per milligram, you know. Um, but if you're just making it at home and you're not making it to sell it, it's no big deal. You can kind of work around to see what amount feels right for you. Um, and plus, let's be honest, <clears throat> with a lot of recreational marijuana booming in many different states, I live in Oregon, for example, um, the prices are through the roof for CBD things, CBD anything. You can get a pound of high quality hemp that's high in CBD for like $200 and you don't have to buy a pound. I, that, that was like maybe an ounce at most, you know, definitely not after I decarbed it and dried it out all bad. But, you know, you can probably make an entire quart or a half gallon or even a gallon worth of your own CBD tincture for cheaper than you can go into the average dispensary or medical clinic and pay out the ass for a CBD tincture just because it's made out of marijuana. The CBD in this is no different than the CBD that's in cannabis. It really, it really isn't. Except for this won't get you high. Um, she probably, I'm not going to say that hemp doesn't have Delta 9 THC in her, but we know that when you order from somebody reputable, you're going to get a COA. It's called a Certificate of Analysis. And the COA tells you um, how much CBD in it, how much THC in it, all different kinds of things. And they have to have it below like a minuscule percentage before the federal government considers it legal. So these people um, who are on the up and up are definitely doing the testing. So I'm really sensitive to THC. Um, I smoked herb for years, I really did, and then it just kind of spiraled my um, PTSD out of control. And so my mind, you know, look at me, I, fa I talk, I fast, I talk backwards. <laughs> and so... THC is not good for me. Don't tell me it's a strain different. I don't I don't want to hear any of that. It's not. It's just that THC throws me into panic attacks. And so I like CBD though. And so I can use this without having any ill effects for me personally. And I am like hypersensitive, hypersensitive to THC now. So, all right. Well, I don't know how well this video did or didn't turn out because my folks are here looking out the window. They've been standing there the whole time making faces and doing things, which is, you know, I know, you know, they're just being funny, but it is what it is. But, oh, oh yeah, I'm supposed to tell you to put a label on it. Ah, uh, my pin is in my other jacket. So, pretend like I have a pin here. Remember, I'm always forgetting something. I'm going to write the date that I did this. I'm going to write what strains I used. Um, I have two different strains in here. One was a uh, server haze and, and sour space something. And people come up with all different kinds of names. And then I'm going to write down, I did like a 50-50 mix. I'm going to write down what I have in it, when I did it. That way I don't forget about it. Plus, because there are different types of hemp and even cannabis, 
they're all gonna affect you differently. So like this one might work really well for you, but another one you might not like. And if you don't write down what your blend is, you might have a hard time recreating it. Um, of course, you might wanna just stick with one type of hemp or cannabis at a time to um, get around that, but write it down. Write it down on a label and you know, put all the information on there and then stick it on there, which I'll do when I go in the house. <laughs> Remember that you are smart enough to do this. Um, most of the time when people are intimidated by it, it's because they haven't tried or a lot of people put um, really complex, confusing, overwhelming, math-related information out there and you're like, whoa, and then you believe that you need to take all these courses to do any type of herbalism and that you need to pay money and that your knowledge if you teach yourself is invalid if you don't pay money. All that's bullshit. You're smart enough to do this. You just have to try, just get curious. I mean, if you're working with safe, simple herbs, like most of the stuff I show you in the video, you'll be hard pressed to hurt yourself. Um, and you can't really mess up a tincture. This isn't gonna go bad. It's got the alcohol in it and the glycerin is a type of alcohol too. It's gonna keep it shelf stable. Um, you're smart enough to do this. You're smart enough to do this. You're smart enough to do this, okay? I guess that's the main <laughs> reasoning behind those types of rants. So, if you like my videos, even when I get interrupted, you know, and I'm out in the windy porch and doing all kinds of things, make sure, um, whether you're watching on YouTube or Instagram, that you subscribe, like, comment, share, turn on notifications. All these help things help me. <laughs> and it also helps get the information out there to other people. Because you'd be surprised at how many people just, they, they just feel like they can't step into this world. And sometimes it just takes one video just one video of being like wow that was really simple to spark uh, um, imagination and creativity in somebody's mind and just change your life so all right i'm gonna get off here thanks for watching bye